Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Dave Bitter, front-end developer at Frontman, and today I have another Friday tip for you. Today we're going to have a look at Plop.js, which is a tool uh, to generate new files uh, in a consistent and fast manner. So let's head over to their website. And if we have a short look at the USPs, uh, you can see that is this small, simple, easy to use uh, tool that you can use in your day-to-day -day work. If we scroll down a bit, uh, we can see a small example already uh, where the basic premise of uh, Plop.js is you have a, a bunch of prompts that you can show the user, they can answer, and based on those prompts, you can perform some actions, uh, for instance, creating files. So why do I need a tool like this? Uh, well, often when I create new components or new utility functions, uh, I copy an old one, I alter all the names in the correct casing, of course, uh, then I remove what I don't need, and then I start coding. Well, that maybe takes a minute or two, uh, so why do that manually when you can spend a few hours automating it? Uh, but as you will see, uh, it, it's a matter of a, a few minutes once you know the tool and you know how to work with it. So I created a small example for my personal website uh, to showcase how you can use this for different types of uh, components uh, or utilities. So if we head over to uh, my personal website, uh, you can see that I have a file in the root uh, called a plop file. That's where you always start with plop.js. And in this plop file, uh, I have the prompts that I mentioned, the actions that I mentioned, and then I export a function where I set a generator uh, with well, a name and a description, as well as uh, the prompts that I made and for the actions, uh, the actions that I made. So let's have a look at the prompts first. So it's an array uh, with objects and each object is a prompt on its own, of course. Uh, and you can specify a type. So for instance, a list where you have uh, basically a selection of multiple items, the name of the prompt. So for instance, uh, in this case, it's type uh, because it's the type of uh, uh, package I want to generate. Uh, then a message uh, that you actually see as a user uh, in the terminal. Uh, and based on that, you have uh, two choices. So component and utility. Uh, after that, uh, I require a normal input uh, for the name of uh, the component or the utility. Uh, again, with a message saying, hey, uh, how do you want to uh, name this? Uh, and a fun thing, don't worry about the casing. Uh, we'll come back to that later. So based on these two prompts, uh, I have enough information uh, to generate either the component or the utility with the correct naming. Um, so if we go to the actions, we can see, hey, if somebody chose a component, uh, I want to do uh, multiple things. I want to create a React component. So we have a, a TSX file, uh, and I'm going to specify a template for that. I want to create a test file. I want to create a storybook file and uh, an SCSS file for the styling. In the case of a utility, it's a little bit easier. I just have two files. I have the actual utility uh, file, uh, a TypeScript here, and a test file for that. So for me, these files make sense because that's how I always create a component or a utility. Uh, if we have uh, a look in my source folder, grab a random component like cart, you can see it's always these four files. Uh, and in these four files, I always have the name there. I always have a class name, which is the, well, the dash cased version of the name. I have some default props, uh, but for instance, for the test file, again, I imp always import that component with that name. Uh, I have this basic test for storybook. It's exactly the same uh, for the styling, exactly the same. So if we look at a utility function, for instance, uh, something called, uh, whether it is an external URL, it's always these two files. Uh, it's always the name again here with the function uh, and in the test file, importing it and running it. Great. So let's close this up and actually run it. So when I run yarn generate, uh, which is the NPM script that I made to actually call plop.js, when I run it, I get the question, hey, Dave, what would you like to generate uh, a new component or a utility? Uh, and I can go up and down with my arrow keys to select them. So let's select a component and we'll call this component the 
Friday tips. Uh, I don't worry about casing or dashes or all that. And when I run this, I can see that it successfully created uh, these four files uh, that I just mentioned. If we go into my source components, I see, hey, there's my Friday tips. And as you can see, the casing here is a Pascal case. Uh, here we have some dash casing. Um, and when we open these files, we can see that the exact same behavior uh, is there, where this is nicely Pascal cased, and here we have the dash case. Uh, and it scaffolds out uh, the basic things that I need to create a component and to be consistent. I think that's a big factor as well. As you can see, I always do uh, these comments for, uh, these are my uh, libraries, these are my utils, uh, these are some components that I might load, and this is the actual component. So I want to stay consistent throughout my code base, and that's why I use this. Uh, we can see that it generated the test file uh, as we wanted, uh, the storybook file the way we wanted it, and uh, the style sheet file uh, the way we wanted it. Great, so for good measure, let's also generate a utility and we'll call this utility Friday tips again. You can see that well, it does exactly the same, of course, uh, but now in a different spot. So in my utility folder, it's going to create this function that, that does nothing at the moment, uh, and it scaffolds out a basic test file. So as you can see, this will save me quite a bit of uh, time, and it will help me prevent some of the mistakes. Uh, but I'm just the only person working on this website. But you can imagine if you have a team with, I don't know, 50 developers and you want to be consistent in creating packages maybe you have a, a mono repo and you have all these packages where you need a package json with version numbers and all this setup stuff uh, it can be quite cumbersome to uh, do every time by copying and pasting uh, as well as trying to explain it to new team members uh, and this is where a tool like this is super helpful because they can run it they can see what gets scaffolded uh, and how it should work so let's head back to the plop file. So in these uh, actions, you can see that we have uh, the type add uh, because we want to add a file. Um, we have the path, uh, so we just saw that. Uh, it would add it to the source components and then uh, name. And as you can see here, I have uh, my casing. So yeah, I can say, hey, I want to have a Pascal casing and whatever the user input it, it will convert it uh, to the correct casing. Uh, and in the case of the uh, CSS file, uh, you can see that sometimes it's dash case, sometimes it's Pascal case. Uh, the final bit uh, of Plop.js is this template file. So it needs to know, of course, uh, what it needs to scaffold and how that should work. Uh, and it uses handlebars to do that. So I have a folder uh, in my config uh, with Plop uh, templates and then uh, the component. So if we head over there, see that here we have the component itself and this is done well with the handlebars uh, syntax uh, so I could say I, I want to have a dynamic bit here which is the name again Pascal case it dash case it here that type of stuff uh, the same for the CSS the storybook uh, and the test file uh, of course for the utility it's exactly the same way and that's the basic functionality of plop.js so as you can see it doesn't do that many things, but it does exactly what it needs to. Have an easy way to uh, prompt a user to generate files uh, and using handlebars to easily uh, template those out. I think this is an incredibly useful tool uh, for, uh, well, small teams, uh, even on your own, like me for my own website, uh, but even more so in the bigger teams, as I mentioned. So yeah, head, head over to Plop.js, try it out. and. Uh, automate your workflow, which is uh, always uh, nice to do, and it will save you a bunch of time and headaches. As always, thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.